I'd like to call this meeting to order on February 6, 2024, Tuesday night, 6 o'clock. And Henry's uh, doing Zoom with us tonight as a school committee member. So, uh, first thing is uh, review the group of minutes from 23rd of January. I will make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. All in favor? Uh, financial report, please. I don't have really anything to report on because we just met two yeah. weeks ago, so I didn't even <laughs> re-download reports for you. But um, I will let you know the warrant totals for the record. There were four warrants since the last meeting signed electronically, totaling $21,063.38. And do you have any uh, questions about the financial statement at all? Nope, all good. Uh, please. I'm going to have public comment now. Print board report first and then public email. comment. It's, a, it's the opposite on this one. Okay, well, this. short and sweet because we just met two weeks ago, so we right. haven't really had a whole lot of time to do anything. It was amazing. <laughs> and the global leaders did have a pet day. Um, students brought in pictures of their pets. Food take them on themselves, they pin them on themselves, or pets they wish they had, or uh, a grandparents pet, um, and they brought in donations for local uh, shelters. So that's really the only noteworthy thing in the last two well, weeks. Well, thank you. Now we have public comment. Okay. First time we've had public for a while, so. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Am I close enough for yep. the thing here? Okay. Um, so my name is Rachel Sonadella. I'm a Waitley resident and a parent of a child who attends West and a former administrative assistant. I'm here today to voice my concerns about the school safety at Waitley Elementary School. In 2023, there were 346 school shootings and 14 incidents already in 2024. Of the 10 deadliest U.S. school shootings in 2018, all but one happened in small rural suburban towns. These are quick to statistics regarding only one type of violence in schools. There are many other types of low impact threats that schools must deal with and are equally as important to consider. With school threats occurring daily, school safety must be at the forefront. The following are my points of concern at West. One, all exterior doors are automatically unlocked by motion sensors located in the vestibules, an extremely uncommon and unsafe feature. When someone is at the interior doors or in the vestibule, the outside door is triggered to unlock. There's also an illuminated push to exit button that's access accessible to any child or adult. And when pressed, the exterior doors remain unlocked without any notification to staff. Newer technologies in the past decade provide a safer and more controlled environment. Two, both classroom wing hallway doors are not equipped with magnetic releases. In the event of an emergency, main office personnel should be able to push a button to close both classroom zones, securing each wing that has direct access to children. Three, there are a lack of lockdown style and security door stoppers in all rooms. All interior doors have a piece of paper taped to them, indicating which way the lock needs to face in order for the doors to be locked. Investing in an affordable lockdown style door stopper commonly used in other schools we keep the room inaccessible regardless of lock position. And it will add a layer of security to occupants. To date, the one thing that has saved 100% of lives in an active shooter situation is a locked door. In addition, all police training will share that increasing barriers that provide time is also important. None of these items that I mentioned will stop a school threat. However, they remove many variables that in the event of an emergency could save lives and provide the time needed for police to respond. The school committee manual states that the school committee is responsible for keeping abreast of new laws and the latest trends in education and for the adoption of a budget. It is my hope that you will take the information I have stated today and look into the trends regarding school safety and discover what neighboring districts have implemented to provide safer environments. I recently worked in a school where all of these upgrades were completed at a low and reasonable cost. Therefore, I urge the school administration to prioritize the safety of children and staff by making the necessary upgrades that will replace the current and antiquated system. As a parent of a child in the school system and a taxpayer, I'd also like to see the school safety upgrades included in the capital improvement plan. 
Please know my reasoning for attending the school committee meeting tonight is that my family and I have made several attempts to raise the concerns with the administration, but they have not been receptive to our feedback. Thank you for listening and for taking my concerns under serious consideration. Thank you for bringing that to our attention. Um, it's nothing that we really bring up during discussions because it's not on the on their on our agenda or anything like that. But we, you know, I'm serious about about locked doors, especially you know at Frontier where we have 600 and something kids there. It's been a priority of mine thinking that you can you know the kids leave the door propped open. You know, with new security measures, I I see it a lot less when I've been to sporting <laughs> events there where a kid will put a, a block of wood in the door or something. I mean. It's hard to prevent something like that, but you know, we'll we'll check into it, and, and you know, I will get back to you, or administration will get back to you. Okay, thank but thank you. you. I appreciate it. Thank yeah. you. Right, so I'm doing the minutes. Okay, could you share that? With Absolutely. Yeah, I will send stuff. Email it to school committee. Yep. You want me to yeah. email everybody? Yeah. So we'll then agree. Post stuff. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next thing, uh, unfinished business, we're going to vote on, um, we'll vote on new policies first, we'll vote on uh, removing policies second, and then we'll talk about the budget afterwards. So, do we want to do it in one, one group to vote on? Yep, and these are the policies I read through last, at the last meeting. You guys can vote them as one group, if you wish. I'll, I'll make a motion that we accept EEA. E C E E A G G B I G C A G C K G D B H B J F J F B B and J F B B dash one. I will second that. <laughs> all in favor? You need to say Aye. Well, I was trying to save her from saying all that. <laughs> I'll do the next one. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> I'll make a motion to remove these policies. I have a second. Do you want to say? Yes, you're right. Uh, second, the motion to remove CLFBBGA, GCCD, GDQD, GCQE, GDQC, HJBA, JHBBA, JHC, and JKA. All in favor? And we come to you again. <laughs> yeah. um, all right, <clears throat> I'm going to share my screen. I will email out these documents uh, to you so that you have them electronically as well. Oh, can you hear? You can hear me. I will not be. Do we have? I was thinking I was muted. Dated budget. I did not send them oh, to you. you. Yet. I'm okay. going to send them to you. And shout out to WES for having the only functioning Google meeting I've been on in two weeks. So well done, you all. This is very exciting. <laughs> Thanks for acknowledging that, Henry. It's been yeah, a lot of time. Yeah. Okay. All right. So this is a draft two of the budget i guess or presentation two the numbers really haven't changed since we last met i'm going to go through um, i'm going to go through what we talked about last time where the budget stands today and our our next steps moving forward so last we presented uh, at the meeting two weeks ago, we talked about a level service budget, which came in at 4.65% over the prior year. A good chunk of that was related to the grant adjustment. So we paid the current year that we're in um, 51,000 roughly in wages with ESSER funds. ESSER funds are uh, have to be used by September. Um, Waitley does have some additional funds available with ESSER, which we did talk about last meeting and I'm going to get back to in a moment. But when I build the level service budget, I always throw things back on that were, are being paid for in the prior year with a grant or one-time funds that's going to go away so that we can really see what the true cost of the budget is if we no longer have those funds available. So that grant adjustment of 51000 
Uh, we had non-wage increases of 17,000. 10,000 of that is for special education consultant services. So related service providers that we're bringing in to meet students' needs based on IEPs is primarily what that, that is for. And then some other minor adjustments to lines that have been overspent in the last few years, buildings repairs, grounds maintenance, um, our copier costs have been higher than what we budgeted in the past. So we made some minor adjustments there. And then the wage increases, you can see those are outlined uh, for you. There, the unit A increase, uh, that's anyone that falls on the teacher contract. Uh, so not just our teachers, but um, you know, special education teachers, grade level teachers, uh, specialists such as speech or OT, if we have any of those positions, nursing staff, um, anyone that falls under that unit A contract. What I want to note here is that we're seeing some savings on this, just as a reminder from the last budget presentation, because we did have a retirement come in. Um, we had a, a, is it your school psychologist? No, yeah, special education. Oh, special education teacher, sorry, I couldn't remember. Um, retiring, so we did capture some savings here. So this is a lower number than usual. Uh, unit C is our IA contract or any um, health service support staff, which really doesn't have any LPNs. Um, you do have a part-time CODA, right? So that is, um, do you have a part-time CODA? You don't. You I want one. one. You want one. No, I have one. Um, I have one. Just keep it in. <laughs> just keep it in. <laughs> so this only accounts for staff that are paid for general fund as well. So that's all we're referring to here. School-based staff, the increase is not very significant here because we have a change in the position. So Mary's position was a year-round 12-month position. The current structure of that role is that it is 10 months only, so we captured some savings in this budget. So that's bringing this number down. And then the central office cost share, uh, Waitley's cost share went down slightly over the prior year. And we're seeing uh, savings captured here due to the change in the nurse leader position. So my point in telling you all of that is that Next year, when some of these things catch up to us and we don't have savings from the nurse leader position and we don't have savings from retirements, you could see these numbers coming in a little bit higher than where they're currently presented. But level service at almost 5% is a pretty significant number for a small school. Um, so next we're gonna talk about new requests. Uh, so here's the part-time coda that, that uh, Chrissy was hoping to add to the budget and that is based on need in the district. Um, primarily for students who require occupational therapy as part of their IEP. Um, Sorry, this is occupational, an occupational therapist coming into the school? Assistant. Oh, this so would be a staff person. So, okay. So ideally we have still the occupational therapist go on a full day a week. Yep. And then uh, a full day? Full, full day. day of a certified occupational therapy assistant. Okay. So, so someone has to oversee that person. Gotcha. So, they each just do one day. Yeah. Um, the math interventionist position we did talk about last time as well. I will defer to Chrissy to talk about that further. Uh, this is a need that has come up two years in a row. I think last year we talked about it as more of a general interventionist to fill in where needed. Um, but more specifically this year, you're saying that you're seeing it, that you, the need in areas of math. So this would be a 0.5 position. Do you want to talk about that a little bit further? Um, really, I'm still my doing she gets the yes. yeah. yeah. um, So you probably heard this already. Um, yeah, they, I mean, we haven't had this person in wait least since no. Carol McCosby was here, correct? Yeah, and I'm not exactly sure what the title of her role. I, no, I, don't, I, don't, I don't mean yes. to be funny. Oh, no, no. Don't know. She, she had mad, many roles, but, but she was good in that. I, mean, um, I, I know students went to her for math. Yeah, so we have um, one reading interventionist yeah. um, who is, she was at one time seeing K through six. Um, and when COVID hit, we, we needed to isolate her to K to two, sometimes K to three. Um, but we're really seeing a need for math intervention in the four, five, and six. Yeah, and I would, I don't want to bring up our scores. That's, okay, that's so why that's, that's what points to seems to be a good um, solution for that. Yeah. Yeah, there's no, it's not arbitrary. I mean, it, right. I always thought it was nice to have a math interventionist and an ELA interventionist, but um, now it's not just a nice idea. It seems that we've hit a point where we really kind of need it. And this person would 
um, part time, full time, part time. Point five, five is part time. Oh, okay, that's yeah. the okay. full time equivalent. So the first challenge would be to <laughs> get it in the budget, and the second would be to find someone who can right. do that part time, but one step at a time. Is there is there another uh, school that is also looking for a part time interventionist that we could? Pitch this as a full time interventionist, but have it go half and half between the schools. Not in our district. Not in our district. Okay. Um, so the next request was for an additional IA, a full time one FTE IA position, and that is based on an IEP. Um, that is a need that we are going to have to fulfill next year. Um, so that that we're going to continue to talk about as part of the budget process. Um, it's not. I, I just want to be differentiate and be clear that it's not. We just want another IA in the building. This is for a specific student mm -hmm. that we know is going to require a one to one. Um, and the last two pieces that we talked about adding funds were for field trips, equity and access. So more and more families district wide are needing support in order to send their child on trips and the cost of transportation has skyrocketed for everything that we're doing, um, particularly for field trips. So we're adding in some funds there and then curriculum consumable money to account for additional costs related to the ELA and the math curriculum that we're um, currently working on rolling out. So all of these pieces would add almost another $70,000 to the budget. So we started at 4.65. If all of these items were approved and added, we would be looking at over 8% um, increase going into next year. Um, in the document you're going to send us, does it show the breakout of what each costs? Um, you're going to get a line by line, yeah. so you, you can see it in there. Yeah. Okay. Um, the and first presentation, I think I emailed, did have the breakdown. Okay. I'll make sure you get that, though. And Chrissy, do you have like a order of importance for these? Like if you were to rank them, what what are your top two, top three? Like, well, the, the CODA and the, and the one to one. Um, I have to cover those services. Yeah. Whether I do it by losing something we already have to, to fund that, I, it's not optional. Um, so in terms of priority, I guess those would be yeah. those would be the top priority. Um, in, in general, costs as well. The math interventions is basically about thirty. Yeah. The IA is basically about twenty to twenty-five, and the CODA is probably fifteen. So when you're talking about these, they're not equal. It's the, the vast majority of that 68. The field trips and whatever just a couple thousand dollars. Yeah, that's yeah. Just a couple thousand dollars. Yeah. So. And the consumables again are not a. It's not an optional thing. Yeah, the, the code the, and the one to one. Yeah. yeah. So uh, next slide, we're going to look at administrative recommendations, which we did talk about last month as well when we met. Um, so obviously we are recommending to fund level services. We are also recommending to fund the request for the one-to-one -one IA, as well as the field trip costs and the curriculum consumables. As Chrissy just said, those are um, things that we have to do. We have to, we have to have consumables to go along with the new curriculum. We have to be able to provide transportation for our field trips and family support where needed and the FTE, the one FTE IA is going to be in the IEP. Um, the CODA and the math interventionists are not on here, strictly, uh, I think, for primarily financial reasons. Um, it's not that Darius and I disagree on the need, um, but we, we don't feel like we have the funds not only this year to support it, but what that long term impact is moving forward. And there's we're going to come up to further conversation around that in the presentation. So um, we're not taking it off the table. We're just letting you know right now where we would stand if we had to present a budget to the town today. Um, so I had mentioned earlier that we do have some ESSER money available. So we are recommending that we use 25,000 of the remaining ESSER to help supplement the budget and uh, an additional 20,000 of Wheatley's rural aid to help supplement the budget. What is the total left in ESSER and what is the total for rural aid? Um, rural aid is around 40,000. 
uh, Esser might have after this year like 35 ish left or after 40 this, left. 25. Um, before that 25 is still active. Yeah. And that has to be used by it has to be used by September. And a good chunk of it is already all earmarked. This is what I feel is available. Um, we do have uh, various things happening between now and September that Laura Ramsey and I have gone through and, and earmarked the funds for. Um, okay. I have too many tabs open. I'm going back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, if we were to move forward with using these administrative re recommendations, the next slide shows you where the budget would land if we did move forward with those uh, recommendations. So level service reminder there, approving 28,900 of new requests, which really is a very minimal amount for field trips and consumables. The majority of that will cover the IA position. Offsetting with ESSER, offsetting with rural aid, our budget would come in at a 3.82% increase or just shy of 75,000. I'm going to talk a little bit about the budget quickly. We're going to go, I'm just going to go through these. You guys are going to get these slides. I actually have paper copy back. I don't know if you want to oh. take notes on any of those. Um, we talked generally about budget composition in the last presentation. This is more specific now that we've honed in on a number that we're possibly moving forward with. You can see here that three quarters of the budget goes to student instruction. So that's anything related to teachers, IAs, um, administrative costs in the building, not your central office expenses. Those are categorized under district administration. Um, but a good you know, three quarters of that budget does go directly to student teaching and learning. Salaries and wages make up about 82% of the pie, um, about 1.6 million, and nearly all of that goes uh, to instructional staff. Again, teachers, IAs, um, and administrative staff that is directly in the building. And then other expenditures, this is an interesting one because it's a little bit more split out. Um, a good chunk of our expenses that are not salary related are dedicated to operations and maintenance. So utilities, building repairs, um, custodial supplies, technology, things like that. And then that's almost even with the uh, consumables and supplies and materials for curriculum instruction. Small chunks. Where's all the money in the middle? <laughs> I like your fancy wagon wheel. Thank you, Mr. Hollow. <laughs> I don't know if I see a donut like that. So in addition to uh, the general fund, we use additional funding sources to help offset the budget. If we did not have these funding sources, our general fund would be about $475,000 higher than it is. So this is just a list showing you um, each of those categories. The thing that I want to point out here is that in the prior couple of slides, I did say that we were going to use 25,000 of ESSER to offset the budget. The additional 10 here is to cover the um, employee separation cost sick buyback that we have to pay out next year. Um, so that's why that number is higher here. And then you can see school choice, early childhood, rural aid, IDEA, which is a special education grant, and then our school lunch fund. So the total budget, uh, total cost to operate Wheatley Elementary School is the size of 2.5 million with those grants and revolving funds, and that reflects the 3.82% budget increase that we talked about previously. So moving forward, uh, I said we would circle back to that math position. Um, I didn't put the coda on here. We can absolutely talk about that more um, as well. We, what we talked about at the last meeting was, you know, can we supplement that instead of hiring a position that would potentially have additional costs to the town, you know, can we do a consultant coming in to fill that need for those IEPs, which still has a budgetary cost to us, but we do have a line item that we are already increasing for special ed consultant services. So that one could be more absorbed, I think, into either the existing line items or we find other grants or, or another way to pay for it. 
um, perhaps there could be a little bit more funding with the IDEA grant to cover that. We would have to talk to Karen about, but I wanted to bring up the math interventionist position because we do know we're hearing that it is a need. Um, we just have to balance that with being fiscally responsible as well, but we didn't want to have the conversation shut down just from a financial perspective. So what we're looking at at this point is further conversation around the math interventionists, how we would fund that um, for fiscal year 25. We do have another 20,000 of rural aid that we haven't earmarked yet that wouldn't fully cover the cost of that position. We're estimating probably 30 to 35,000 to cover a half time um, person in that role. Uh, we may be able to squeeze a little bit more out of ESSER if I go back to the drawing board with Laura and see what you know, crunch down and, and see what can we um, do away with. But that's one year funding. You know, how do we fund it in the future is one of the larger challenges. If our budget is already starting off this year without an additional staff person at almost 5% level services, how do we maintain that moving forward? Um, it, you know, having one year funding doesn't really help us long term. Yeah, so in, it is going to cause a, us to be in a worse place next year. And so I don't know, and I don't, where we're kind of blind is we don't know where the, the town stands in the sense of right now, um, you know, Frontier will have its meeting on Tuesday, but Wheatley is going to get hit by Frontier on its assessment. So, um, I can let you guys know that because it's going to affect the overall ask from the schools. And that has nothing to do other than it has nothing to do with Frontier's budget, which is going to come at a reasonable number. It's just the state determines the wealth of the town, compares it to the wealth of the other towns, and says you owe this much of the money beyond what the, the state funds. And so last year, and so I don't know where the town sits all this. And so some of this might be we have a conversation with the town about this. Um, because last year, Wheatley was not a held harmless school. It was actually a school that received FAA funding. So the Student Opportunity Act funding is going to schools that are growing in, growing in numbers. And Wheatley grew in numbers last year, and they got just under $50,000 extra. I'll call it extra because we didn't ask for it um, to offset their cost of the school. So they, how did they say that? Do they have savings? Is that something that they will push forward to this year or do they use it? And that was that's the town. Yeah, yeah. The, town gets it. the town gets the money directly. Um, and they, you know, they can choose how they pay it. They just receive more. While all the other elementaries, because they're all, it's called held harmless, which means they're a stagnant or declining enrollment. Um, you only get the parts from Cuba. So you get, it was sixty dollars per head, right? It was a couple thousand bucks, but they actually got a lot more because that's how the SOA money is working. Um, so they're one of the few communities that did. It's really, it was really weird because it's like mostly the small small towns aren't getting. But they won't this year. They, they won't have get to, it this they're, year. They're back in hold harmless. But I'm only saying that because I, what I'm trying to explain is I don't know are the revenues of Wheatley up this year. Mm -hmm. Is that going to be shared with them as it is? Um, that kind of thing. And then the other the state, you know, so, and then also my concern on this budget is that it's going to escalate next year. So, you know, we are in a, a coal agreement this year that's, you know, to be, you have to anticipate it's going to be higher next year, is, is what I was going to say. Um, and so those general costs are going to all expand. So that's the concern about adding that position in. We were kicking around an idea of, possibly doing a paying for it outside the budget and doing a one-year position. So you find an expert, maybe someone's retired, wants to do part-time, you know, or someone who is in between things, you know, trying to find the position, but has a level of expertise. And we do it as, you know, we use something like HESR money. And the intent of what it's for is to create a you know, emergency services due to the pandemic and the lot, and then get us through next year, improve student learning, you know, you know, that kind of thing, and maybe get some of those students up and that kind of stuff. And then we assess at the end of next year, can we add it to the budget or you know, are we predicting yeah. for it? The only problem with that is it sounds great when I just said it, but there's only so many ways to pull the money from that number. Other number, the three point eight is going to go up because we just use the money we use to offset it. Okay. So, if we, it could be a conversation piece we have with the town that says, "Listen, this is what we want to do." It's not mm -hmm. added to increasing the budget forever moving forward to a 
apply it this way instead of using, using extra money that way. What do you think? And see, you know, <clears throat> see if people bite on that. Um, that would, you know, because there is a, you know, the math need is there. Um, we are also, timing wise, also introducing a math, new math curriculum. So that's right. going to help. And the thoughts are that, you know, after a year, that new math curriculum should be taking off as well. You know, meaning that we should be able to see the benefits of a more stable curriculum there. So, you know, timing wise, having that person in, in position would, could be helpful too in that in that regard. So, but it's X's and O's. And yeah, the so O's didn't really work out right the first time I ran the, the numbers by Shelly. So <laughs> it's going to need, we're going to need outdoor, outdoor, outside help from the town in some capacity to make that work. You know what I mean? They could pick up the separation costs that we were going to use the rest of whatever from. I mean, it, it doesn't matter how you cut it. They got to write a check for something in order for us to make that happen. We're going to have separation costs for this next. We do. Yes, about 10,000. Your other. Oh, yeah. So, but again, it's just, it's pots of money, but it's a one time cost. And, you know, they, they'll buy into a one time cost to save the overall escalation of a budget, which many times the towns do, and other towns are doing that with us. They did one last year for retirement. Didn't they? So, we usually take retirement out because yeah. it's an escalator. And, you know, anytime we can do one, you know, and then we have one time use as money, yes, they're gone after this year. And, so, and I, I would really encourage us to post it as a one-year position with renewal dependent on funding, not to put it out there as just hiring mm -hmm. a math interventionist because we may not be able to afford it. And if we're upfront with somebody versus having to lay them off mm -hmm. unexpectedly, it just well, we've already been supposed to be able to cap it back. So sure. if say, I heard that it might not be funded next year. <laughs> so you might as well be honest up front so you can be honest with yourself. Yeah. So. Um, but anyway, that's the only, I mean, that was the kind of a creative solution, but it puts us, it puts us in a tight spot budget wise. <clears throat> and the other thing is we know that the one person who's retiring at the end of this year, but a separation class will go into the next year. Right. And by then I may have other retirements so we could get whacked a couple of times. Right. And so then. I know this is information overload, but it is the budget season. It's, it's a time to take it in. The state revenues came out again today. They're under, they've now been, it's five or six months where they have not made, met the mark. And so they're saying, they're going to talk about again, possibly nine seat cuts before the end of this year, which is going to tighten everybody's purse. Um, the nine seat cuts probably won't hit education, but um, which also means we also were at a budget meeting on Friday. Um, from a nonpartisan budget group that presents the superintendents to explain the greater state finances. Um, and they basically said in most years, the governor puts out a budget and leaves room for growth within the um, House and Senate, where they add on their things. They said you you should be prepared to see the opposite happen this year, that the House and Senate budget may come all under the governor's budget. So while instead of being um, you know, being conservative, that it might be the actual higher numbers. You may not see, you may see, you may see like, you know, uh, the student per pupil go up, but you may not see the funding of transportation or you may not see the funding of some of these other things and to the towns. So when we look at constricting not just our budget, the towns are also going to be saying, well, we might get less for roads and we might get less for those kind of things. So everybody's going to suddenly get more and more tight. The big number coming out is April. Is when they release the April um, first quarter results, but given the fact that where we're at now, that's probably going to come under under the estimated. I wonder so. if we could bump back the timing though of our vote to adopt and the public hearing because Brian said that the town meetings right now slated for June four. Remember a few years back, we I think right after COVID, we pushed yeah. back the timing because all the towns were having meetings in June. I mean, maybe we need some additional time, one, to map out internally the best plan, but also to see what the town's revenue is really. Is that to wait for a, like. the state to come back to us on the first of the month on April, or? I don't know what, I don't think they have a deadline, the next level for the house. They say it doesn't, have? but, and again, I may be talking a little bit way too much up here in that sense by looking at what the revenues of the state are in April. It's just going to, those revenues are going to dictate how the House and Senate decide to 
how much money they're going to put into education. But also, but also, we also got to get this as soon as we vote for the 26, then we get it to the town. I mean, if we go any later, then you know. No, I think we have conversation. I hear what you're saying. You're exactly right. I think we have conversations with them. This is yeah. going to be one of those years where you know we ask to get on their agenda. I mean, sometimes maybe they, probably sooner sometimes they ask us, but maybe we ask it them, and we say, "This is where we're at." And what are your what does your funding look like this year? And that kind of thing. Um, and, it, and it may and it may we have to fix the math problem in house too. I mean, it, it, it's not. It's one way of solving it. There's other ways of solving it as well. And you can put another hat on Chrissy. Yes, Chrissy might have math as well. Uh, <laughs> I think you are great, Chrissy. So, if we're looking at funding a, a part-time math position, we're probably going to be closer to four percent than the three point eight two. Three point eight two is close to four, but I think we really will be because you're going to be four. funding it with. SRO. We're not going to have enough yeah. extra cash to fully fund. Okay, so you're, right, you're saying that, so a percentage point is 19, right? 20. Yeah, 20. Yeah, 20. So a percentage point is 20, and, you know, a, the intervention is you're saying with ESSER fund, we can probably take a percent of it. You're still going to have some leftover that's going to carry us over the board yeah. that we have to pay. Yeah. I may have said that more confusingly to try to. Yeah. But do you understand me? In in April, um, the when the state puts out those numbers, does that include the rural aid bill? So the rural aid bill, they that actually goes out tomorrow or Thursday. They will decide whether or not that, that gets is gonna get put into committee, which means it's dead for this year. So we will know by the end of this week if the rural aid is if they're going to get another push to fully fund. But which the, they said they said there's no money to do that. So no, but the governor's that. budget did fund it, and matching matching this year. year. But we threw another but on there. The governor would try to change some of the language around it, so we're going to see that it may try to recategorize who's getting what. So again, it does the exact opposite, which all the schools have been advocating for, which is give us consistency so we can use it in our budget. So we don't know how much money if we'll actually if we'll get the same actually get the same amount as last year. You know what I mean? You're, yeah. You know, and it's not a lot of money in the state budget. Fifteen million is not a lot. That's a they may not touch that. That's kind of a uh, what do you call it? It's a special buffer. Eh, what do you call it? Um, you know, you tag something for special earmark. Earmark. It doesn't get the special earmark. I mean, fifteen million is a is a drop in the bucket compared to some of the major programs that they would if they shift by one percent. You know, if they shift tra regional transportation by ten percent. It's, it's gonna be more than fifteen million shifted. Even if it's funded levelly, the same as this year at forty thousand ish, we're going to need that to offset next year's budget that level services is probably over five percent <laughs> next year right okay, i definitely don't think we should spend ahead no. that, is, that is for sure no, i was just curious if those numbers had come out yet I, the other question i had um about this idea of doing a consultant instead of a staff member for those there that have been in the game a bit longer than i have is there any data to suggest that that's as effective more effective or less effective than an actual staff member in each instance it's so it's such a uniquely specific situation that it's really hard to compare okay how it works with a school staff member versus a consultant um and these are small school issues is that in larger schools they have they may have a full-time ABA on staff. They may have a VCBA on staff. We don't have that, so we consult out. Uh, we have good partnerships in all of these realms, so I, you know, it's, it's usually been a positive experience. And um, haven't experienced anyone yet who's not willing to work with the team, um, which can be difficult because the time we contract them for. Might not be the same time that meetings happen and and people are usually pretty flexible about you know joining the meeting to make sure that that we're all 
Right. So it's going to come down to a good higher in the sense of it's it's fifty percent. So fifty percent of what is it just mornings, or is it three days? You know, two and a half days a week. You know, is it three days one week, two days another week? You know, like if there's all these different ways to do it based on you know that that would be open to the administration to try to figure out based on candidates and you know that kind of stuff and how to set it up. Because um, because it, it is going to be hard. It's going to be someone in a unique life setting in the sense of either retired and wants to come back and work a little bit or someone who's working on a degree and wants to pick up some hours as they're going into curriculum and whatnot or someone who's got a home life that you know they want part-time work instead of full-time work or we can find another district where they can find a share i mean that's um, when you have the one day a week people, no, it's, it's yeah, tricky yeah. when someone has something in their service to the grade that's two times two times 30 or two times 60 and we ran into that the first time so our current occupational therapist who was used to be here every tuesday had to split her days so she's half day tuesday half day wednesday and then we lose a little bit because there's travel time so it's not we don't get as much out of it as someone who's here full day because you say that's the only way that the person could see a, a kid twice in a week, right? Yeah, or right. Something. So sometimes you're great. Right. Sometimes you can't do it the same. But in your IEP, <laughs> they, could, legally, yeah. it could happen in the same day because then you're still covering those right. two times thirty right. minutes. But right. it's not it's ideal. Yeah, um, is this the final? Is this the final picture? Or um, you have no, I, one I just have some info. I have an enrollment. I, oh, go ahead. I just want you know, if we're going to go to the town at three point eight two, you know, I. You know, I I think we should, I think we should spend the rest of rural aid and lesser funds and get it get it down below three percent. I think we should use the funds up. We got to use one by September, anyway. Why not? Why not use? But it's a whole different angle than the conversation I, we're having. I know, but but I'm I'm just saying that we go into the town at three point eight two, and then we're talking about going in higher. We're talking about jacking it up to four and getting the math in. I mean, that's, that's, yes. that's yeah. what we're discussing right now. I'm not saying that's where, where we're. And I know, I know we need it. I, I, I realize that we need it, but we also have to think about that. There again, if the town doesn't have the, you know, the funds. But that, I don't see where it hurts to go in at that number, and then they tell us we can't do it, and then we come back to the drawing board. I mean, yeah. I mean, we, you know, you we don't you, know what they yeah. have until we go ask. Yeah. Right. And, I, and let's let's put the math interventions within perspective. The school will do a will do a good job of getting those kids who are you have some additions to math without the math interventions. That means one way to adding two ways to work on the gym. One's adding steroids. You know what I mean? And so it's you know, and that's kind of not a very <laughs> You know, like probably a terrible that. analogy, but probably a terrible <laughs> analogy, but you get the idea like this is gonna be a shot of a general and to help within that area. We can still make gains in the area without it. We're not gonna be like, oh, these kids are forever, they're not gonna catch our map. I don't want to get that. It's not like dire, oh well, we well, we, well, we bail the kids, but we don't really get something there. else. If that person's doing something else without having a new person, that's putting that person's time spread out too much where it could be doing other things, correct? I mean, right, which is why we crazy. should try to get the math intervention if we're in this year at least for a year while they're working on the new you know math curriculum and get those kids up to speed so that they can be with their peers the following year um so i i agree that we should probably treat it as a one-year position at this point and then see where we're at after that so i can redo the numbers throwing as much rural aid and as much ESSER as possible at it and then add back in the 0.5 FTE math interventionists just a guess is we're going to be at four or slightly above four and we go to the town and we talk about that and so understand just to know how that works if you have if you go into a public hearing you can't raise that number afterwards unless you have another public hearing so you want to put in your higher number that says, listen, we'll, we can be talked about reducing this, mm -hmm. but we have to show our needs. So if Shelly throws this together and we come back and it's, I'll go up even higher, it's 5.1. That's the number we go into public hearing. It won't be that high, but but yeah. for argument's sake, it's 5.1. We go into public hearing with, we'll grab everybody's attention. And then we can also have data that says, well, this is what it looks like if you take it out. 
And just because we aren't funding it doesn't mean the town can't fund it or fund something else within the budget in a different way. That's why I brought up the separation costs because that could be ten thousand dollars more, you know, which they've taken in the past because it's not an annual thing, even though it's going to be annual. You see another one coming, but you understand how it works. Um, you know, they would pay for something else out of their free cash to offset that year, and they, I know, if they're thinking. They're thinking financially they don't want to inflate the budget to be forever paying an inflated budget moving forward they want to keep that budget as low as possible and pay for things outside of it if they can that was the idea. i do i want to second what um what beth just said too about having it be for a year and see where we are um my concern at a school this size is that a student is struggling in math at least we see it in the high school that when students struggle, behavioral issues increase, and that ends up taking away from the learning time of other students. So I'd be concerned if we would start seeing sort of an echo chamber of disruption. Um, so I think it's really critical that we get this on uh, in the budget as a proposal. And I like this idea of going in slightly higher and seeing what the town says, what are their numbers for the highway department increase in budget and fire department, police department, and see where we fit in in the bigger picture here and see what they can give us because I have no idea what those numbers are, if they're asking for increases or anything like that, but I'd rather go in asking for more and then renegotiate than go in asking for less and being like, oh God, I wish I had to put that in there. Okay. I hey, think that's perfect. I, think, I, have we, direction. I, think, I think we need to meet with the town. To, I mean, sooner than later, I mean, and once we're ready, to meet with them because did we last year have our public hearing at one yeah. of their meetings i think we did we went there we, well, we went there to talk i didn't think we voted on our budget no but i think it was the public hearing presentation i think we yes. ended up you opened we the school at, committee meeting you know, at, at final, their finance yeah, the committee meeting so we haven't really heard from brian about presenting to them you want me to stop and chit chat with them a little bit? Sure. I mean, I, I can stop by tomorrow. Just to, tomorrow. Just, just, just. They do. Okay. I think they have a meeting tomorrow. Finance? Should we just drop in? <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll go tomorrow night and just. I'll, they usually I'll have tech go maybe. at the same time. Oh, to present. As yes, well. tech was there. Yeah. Well. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Maybe that. we need to maybe we need to connect with Brian about it. Yeah, so what I'll do is I will connect with Brian, tell them, tell him our game plan, and um, you will obviously welcome yeah, stop yeah, it and, and reaffirm that, um, and see what he wants to do. In a sense, if they want us just to do the public hearing, and then we could have the public hearing there. Um, Come here. It'd be nice if we get this. Was the finance and the select board here last year at the same time? I think so. I, don't well, think I know the finance was that big. It was like a yeah. big U of yeah, but there's a lot of finance. People, but I didn't know if the select board. Process? I think what's his name was there. Um, <laughs> it was not Joyce. Yeah, it was both. It was, it was both. both. It was a lot of people. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. I mean, if you go there, it is what it is, and we can talk about. Well, we just explain what we have here tonight. We'll Summary and bring this down. Oh, slides, I so. have many more things to share with them after the feedback that they provided. Oh, what they're going to need line at it. Oh, I've got it. Don't <laughs> worry. <laughs> um, so I think I only have two more things here to show you, and it's just data, and we don't really have a whole lot to talk about. It's just um, the enrollment slide. Uh, you can see enrollment had that big change from 22 to 23, which don't forget, Chapter 70 is always a year behind so last year is when the state or in 24 is when state received the money for that big increase and then we're seeing it pretty level from 24 to 25 and 23 to 24 doesn't make enough of a difference to increase aid there but um just some info for you oh and then historical budget data just so you could see where we've been over the last five years that's it Thank you. I will email you this presentation and the line by line budget as it stands right now. Um, when, just so that you have that going through the process. I'm going to give the finance committee and the select board something to look at. 
before we show up? I think it depends when we decide the meeting is. They typically want it, I think, seven days ahead of time. So we'll have to figure out when that meeting Whenever you is guys mean, whenever you have something right. ready. I mean, I mean, that March, I mean, we have, they're not going to turn around the next week. And then the week after that's vacation, I mean, realistically, I think we're probably going to run with that public hearing. Date. Anyways, there's plenty of time. I mean, I just want to get it to they will also, they are, right, they'll also have right. No, and they'll also have frontiers numbers as of after Tuesday of next week. They'll have frontier okay. numbers because frontier will pass that along because yeah. they have to have theirs done by the end of the first week of March. So, um, but we have plenty of time. So, um, yeah, I think, I think that meeting won't be actually be earlier. Probably will be on what we've already set as the uh, public hearing day. Okay. Wait, when do we set a well, public hearing for here, but we don't have a public, they haven't said to come visit them at, a, at any time yet, have they? Come yeah. visit us? I can ask about Facebook too, because I want you guys want us. No, it's March, March 7th. 7th. Well, and they have to go to Frontier's public hearing on the budget because Frontier will be voting the budget by the time. It's a little it's a paper copy of the line by line. Frontier public hearing is the fifth. Did and they vote the budget those? on the seventh. Okay. So and we're supposed so to have a public gonna, hearing about it gonna, on the seventh. They're going to vote it no. at six and then at seven. We're going to have a public hearing. It's my favorite. I have a stack because I have so many meetings I didn't stack. And so, any so the first, what I basically said is that the voting of the budget would be less than an hour. It would be a 45 minute meeting. There's no real discussion. You know, and if it's that much discussion, then we're probably having another meeting. You know what I mean? Frontiers? It, well, something blows yeah. up. Something blows It's not going to blow up. The frontier no. budget is pretty stable. So, that's why we have a subcommittee there that does all the hard stuff first. Right. And there's not, there's not, no. We don't see, we don't predict to be an inflamed budget. Let's go to that way in the sense that we're going to have meetings to calm people down. Henry, did you have any other questions at all? Uh, yeah, I got a couple things just on my list that aren't budget related. Uh, is this the time to bring them up or no? Is it about money? Um, I'd like more of it. Is that something you can help me with? But otherwise, no, it is not. Full still hundreds? <laughs> that works for me. Um, no, this is related to other other school committee stuff. Is that a good time, Penny, or should we wait till? Uh, I so we'll close this section of the talking yeah. about the budget. I would just wait to get to reports. Yeah, we get down to reports. I'll Perfect. you can. All right. Uh, new business. We got some new policies. First reading. I'll just I'll read them off. Uh, policy CD. Okay. But you know what? I can give you the. I think it, it just kind of works smoothly if I give you the. We take the two seconds for me to run through it this okay. time. Then that way you don't. When you vote it next time, hopefully vote it next yep. time. Whatever. Um, KCD is public gifts to school. There's updated language around the fiscal responsibility of the school committee on that. KHA um, public solicitation in schools. There's cleaner language um, in our. Policy was not updated the last time MAS went through, so it didn't even match the what they were updating. So it's good to get that one up, um, up to speed. LBC's relation with non-public schools. There's new language in there. Um, it's a policy that we we are working with, but you may Whitley doesn't have this issue because there's none in the town. But the other towns have to constantly work with the non-public schools in the services that we provide as a public school. Believe it or not, um, you know we provide services to private schools because we're the public school in town. But there's language, legal language around that within that. EHAA um, is a new policy that provides a foundation for administrative procedures and practices um, to ensure that information which is stored and accessed in the district technology is appropriately protected. So it's district security related to technology. EHB is data and records retention. This new policy, another new policy, addresses the gap in the recommended policy regarding retention of records, including electronic communication by public officials. 
Another new policy is GBEE, personal use of technology. This new policy outlines the responsibility of the district personnel in their use of technology is expected this will provide a foundation for further administrative procedure. We already have our acceptable use policy and that kind of thing. So this stuff is not new, but it's kind of like, it basically says you will have procedures that's, that will follow that. And we already had the procedures, we just didn't have the umbrella policy above that, which does protect the committee to say that you, are, you have those things in place. KCD, Community Use of Digital Resources, new policy. Um, and basically policy recognizes that digital resources, most notably public Wi-Fi, are now in common places in school in outlining appropriate considerations. KDCB is the district website and social media, another new policy. This new policy recognizes that districts and school communities both have websites and social media pieces and best practices, including public comments on such sites, need to be held to. And then um, EFC is universal free school meals. That's an update to the policy since the law has changed for um, free meals. And then EFD is new uh, school nutrition program change policy. Again, with the updated to the free meals, it's getting the, the language and that up to speed. So it's not really a change in how we're doing this. So. And then removal, the removal policy, KCB. No. So we quick, I'll look real quick. Um, yeah, so KCB uh, is community involvement in decision making. It's a redundant um, policy that is found in other places, and right. MASC recommends that we move it. Okay. Any questions on the new policies, Henry? Beth, and of course, if you have one, just, it's the first reading. So if you have questions, please let me you know, email me or bring to the next meeting. Email me so I can get the answers ahead of the meeting. So if it's a simple question, we can move forward with it. Perfect. Um, it's time for you, Henry. You can share what you want to talk about. Awesome. Uh, so I, I, I guess first and foremost, I, uh, I had a uh, collaboration or collaborative meeting um, last week and just like I said in the other meeting uh, the organization continues to impress me it is very much in the black not as much as they were predicting but they spent a lot of time developing uh, asynchronous professional development for teachers which as a teacher I greatly appreciate um, and that is going to actually lower their costs for member districts moving forward once it's implemented so that was really exciting um, I had a, a constituent reach out about composting and I wasn't sure it was today we had a communique about it and I wasn't sure if that's something that I have to add to next week's agenda or if that's something I can read to you all or have them come and do public comment. I don't know what the, the procedure is there. Well, probably the well, procedure wise, it's not on the agenda. Okay, so I will I will ask to have it added to next week's agenda. Yeah, you can add it to the next agenda. Um, next month. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Also, if a constituent reaches out to you regarding concern, you can also contact either me or the principal um, if you're looking for fact checking on that kind of stuff. Okay. All right. Yep. Um, and then I had one other question regarding um, a grant program in the state, the Renew America Schools, but because uh, the second round of funding for that is coming up in the spring, I think. I just wasn't sure if we're involved with that, given that our roof leaks and we could get some solar panels. Um, I don't recognize the name of that off the top of my head. Okay. Want you just shoot it to me? I would love to. There's a lot. There's a lot of companies trying to jump on. There's they're putting like 50 million into roofs in solar. Mm -hmm. And you're like, wow, we should jump on board with that. Well, if you break down how much 50 million is going to get you on a new roof in a public school building with solar, you're talking about like four projects. And yeah. so it's a huge amount of money. And so I, I got reached out by one of the companies. And I was like, oh, this is great. You know, because you know, Frontier has got a big flat roof and we want to replace the roof. We can throw some solar on it. And I was like, wait a minute. The roof alone is going to cost, you know, oh, you know, seven or seven million. Yeah. And then the solar on top of that, that will take one fifth of the state's overall budget. So I don't know what they're really doing with that money, but 
I will share with you and you, you, you can look at constantly get hit up by, hey, the school, the state's coming out with money, you know, sign on to our company, and then there's not really money there. So send that to me. I don't mean to be a party pooper, but I have a feeling that's I have good. Just, all, all good. Um, and uh, that's it. That's it from me. Thanks, Henry. Thank you. Uh, the clamors. I'm sorry. Sorry. Okay. Uh, Capital Improvement Committee met uh, last week to give priorities to projects, and the school's projects received top priority. So um, the only caveat to that was um, the second phase of the mini splits received a B in case they want to finance everything together in a single year. But as far as the way we had it laid out, it's Priority A, along with the floors, um, so that's we're great. good to go. Wow, wow. That's, that's super. Yeah. yeah. Um, and they'll get hopefully some rebate back. Yes. Well, yeah, that was a big nice. talking part was yeah. that you know if we didn't move on this now, those rebates would go away. Yeah. And they are fluctuating, like compared to what we were expecting on some of the projects. Mm -hmm. We're still getting things in, money in, but. Um, not quite exactly what we thought on some of the other things that are happening just wow. so they have that in the back of their mind too but get it locked in so they get something at least right be great if no one else has any i need a motion to adjourn um, um wait was there oh. no committee chair report excuse me did did you you have a report? i don't know if i missed something no did i have a report no okay <laughs> no i talk enough i'll move to adjourn I'll second it. All in favor? Good night, Henry. Good night. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.